These are the tools you're going to need for this repair. I have a torque wrench, half inch. Um, you need a disc brake pad and caliper service tool kit. That, uh, I got this from Harbor Freight, MF11-1, 17 millimeter socket for the lug. Um, a screw, flat head screwdriver is just helpful. Um, I use some foam for uh, rubber pieces so they slide on better for the sensor. You're going to need uh, needle nose pliers. Um, a pick or a small screwdriver is going to be helpful. 13 millimeter wrench, preferably with a ratchet end, makes it easier. This is the brake caliper kit. You need number eight. And this setup right here, this slides over and down to get it to this position, as I'll show you. Half inch impact, and I have a torque stick. You know, it's optional to remove the wheels. millimeter to remove the lugs. The wheel doesn't come off, you can give it a tap. Put the mallet on the back side of the tire. Going to be replacing brakes on a F10-535. Purchase this kit, 34212-449-289, which comes with the sensor. It comes with set of pads, comes with the anti-squeal shims and uh, new bolts with Loctite. Uh, brake paste is separate so you will have to get that separate. Part number is right there 8312-296-187. just want to note real quick that on this particular BMW you have an inboard and an outboard pad. The inboard pad is the one that has the sensor and it has this lock on it. You can see that design right there. The outboard pad does not have the lock and it just has the, uh, the U shape. There's the one and that's the difference right there. You can see that lock. Now this, v this particular BMW has the electronic parking brake which is this actuator on the back of the caliper. So we're going to have to use a special tool to wind that in. Um, also, this uses a 13 millimeter here. And this also is, um, I don't remember if that's a 13 or not, but there's a trick you can do. Just use a pair of vice grips and you can grip that and then break your 13 free on the back. So the problem here is that you're going to run into the ledge because this is really narrow. So you need a really thin, um, wrench in order to get in there. So this is a 17, I still can't get in there. It feels like it's either a 16 or a 17, but with a pair of thin vice grips, just like these, you can grip it, because you just have to support this. It actually locks on perfectly, so that's how I'd recommend doing these brakes. It makes things a lot easier. So I'm going to use a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench for the bolt and the vice grips on the inner nut and I'm just going to remove the replaceable bolt from the back of the caliper that has Loctite on it that comes as part of the kit. Right? It has the Loctite. So you're going to discard this right here. Release and you can do the same thing on the bottom. This is the slider right there. Alright, so I'm going to lock it with my vice grips and use my 13 break that free and you're gonna discard both of those bolts so then you're just gonna walk this backwards to get it to come free and slide this forward Take the caliper off. Now I'm just using a Harbor Freight style uh, Maddox disc brake caliper service kit, which comes with a lot of different adapters. Um, for my purpose, I need number eight to 
fit this little tab right here on the top in one of these grooves here on the electronic parking brake and then it's going to lock into the two holes right there this tool goes into that and then this puts pressure on the back of the caliper and then it walks and turns the caliper piston back into place all right hopefully i can juggle this here this goes through here and around to get it on this i have attached here to the two tabs this is your adjustment Right, so this has to fit like a pad and set up your adjustment to fit in between the caliper. That locks onto the caliper piston and then you back this out until you have good tension. And then at that point you can, you can twist just like this, the entire assembly, which brings the caliper in. Okay, and then you can keep adjusting the tension. Turn, all right, make sure this stays tight. And turn until it's at the end. All right, when that tightens up on you, just loosen up the nut on the end of the tool, which releases your tension. Now just remove your pads. Now I am only doing pads because the rotors are above specification. So remember the outboard pad has just the circular portion here, does not have the lock. Like the inboard pad it has those two locks. I do replace these shims here, so just use a screwdriver to lift them out, real simple. And the other ones just lock right into place. Yep, just make sure they're fully seated. Same thing on the top. And these are all the same. Make sure they're fully seated. Going to lubricate the back of the pads. My out and in. With BMW brake paste. With the backing surface and the slider surface. But not on the friction material. And you only need one of these brake paste. You don't need two. I have an extra one just in case. I lost one. Nice, quick, and easy. Thankfully, uh, my friend did not need rotors. Uh, the price difference is quite a bit higher with rotors. Okay, that's all lubricated. I put the tool back on and you know I had to work it back and forth and it looks like it's it's going now nice and easy. But I had a spot where it locked up on me before, so I thought it was bottomed out. I thought it looked like it was out too far, but so I just gotta make sure and you just gotta work it back and forth so you can loosen it and tighten it. And I'm actually going clockwise to put the piston in. If I go counterclockwise, the piston will actually come back out. So I think I'm right at the end now. 
And obviously, if your caliper doesn't fit over your pads, you know that your piston is out too far. Just make sure. Yes. We're going a little bit. Okay. So you might have to work without it that a bit before you can draw that in all the way. All right, install the outboard pad. See if I can get you a shot of that. Slide it into the bottom one and then the top one and push it in just like so. And pads are installed. My outboard has the flat side and the inboard has the raised side where the sensor would go. The sensor is only on the passenger side in the rear. Uh, make sure that the piston is fully retracted. When you put the caliper back on, you want to go underneath and up. Otherwise, you'll hit and you won't be able to get past the parking brake. So, underneath. Oh, I've had to walk it back off on me. There you go. Pop back on. Underneath and back, like so. And then you can get your bolt started on the top and bottom and then we'll snug everything down now see down here it was hitting push that back and it'll fall right into place like so and then you can get the other nut started sorry other bolt and we're just going to tighten these down all right I'm going to just snug these down I have my vice grips to lock that Nice to have a ratcheting, ratchet, or ratcheting wrench with a flip toggle on it. So just snug these down. One. I found a really good spot for my light. I hung it off the camera actually, and uh, gives me some shadows, but it makes it so you can see pretty good. Here's the sensor wire, and this holder right here can be a little tough. You just put a screwdriver between here and the nut that holds the caliper and give it a tug. You can pop that out nice and easy. And then usually the rest of these are pretty easy to just pop out of their holders. All right, so we're gonna just move that out of the way. The sensor's worn through, so I wanna just be quick, just rip it out. That way you don't have to worry about it. Um, I like to put this aside and run that last. That way, you know, just in case, some of these can be Rattled a little funny, you don't want it to hit the tire, so you can make sure to put it back in the right spot. Okay, I'm going to take the two bolts out, and you might be able to get a better view than me moving around with the light on my head. All right, break this one free. Okay, that spinning, we'll lock it down. That's a 13 millimeter, if I didn't mention it. Okay, take the caliper off. Right, down underneath, out of the way. We have to put the piston in. Hopefully this side goes a little bit easier. pressure on it and find the spot where that little nipple is. Put pressure outwards and I can start turning the caliper in. I think it starts to jam up like the other one did on me. Just back it out the other way. and just keep adjusting a little bit at a time. There she goes. Just 
jam it up. I'm going to back it back out and then bring it back in again. All right, so I'm going to work this in and out and get it done. I think the trick with this particular tool is to leave it a little bit loose and don't snug this down too, too much. That way the piston turns easier. I think the pressure of the tool on the boot kind of hangs you up. So, I mean, I did still have to work it back and forth, but I found that leaving, there it is, just stop. That's perfect. Leaving this a little bit loose is better than tight because that way it doesn't create the friction on the rubber boot. Sweet. So, for this Harbor Freight tool, that's the way to go. And probably about the same with the other tools too. BMW tools a little bit easier to use. Board pad off, inboard pad off, clip, clip. Upper and lower. My pads are lubed already, outboard. <laughs> Make sure you put the pad on the right way. Inboard. Okay. That's put in. My caliper should fit. Front side dip down. Yep, okay, looks good. Put these back. Yep, so it floats nice. And my two new lock bolts. Okay, snug these down, and they should be good and tight, but not over tight. There we go. Same thing on the upper. Okay. Okay, sensor installation. Just put a little bit of upholstery cleaner on the slide let's see if that helps yeah like magic so if you got some soapy water that would work just as good and this comes to this point this one can be a little tough so i just looped it slid right in continuing our routing pops out there bring your sensor around All right, from there it goes to the next one. Then it turns up onto a spot on the body. This one can be a little tight. That's the sensor wire. All right, I'm gonna unplug it from the harness here. Yeah, let's see. I got a pick. I'm just going to come underneath the clip gently. There's a lot of dirt back here. I can clean the dirt out. Maybe I can press it then. There, there it goes. All right. So right there is a slot to get the dirt out. Okay. I don't want to pull this down and rip it out of the body harness. That would not be a good day for me. 
Okay, this can help try to finagle out of the body here. It's pretty stuck in there. There we go. The screwdriver. Okay, that's our old sensor. And follow the same routing and same trick. Spray a little bit of lube on it, or put some soap on it. Clip your sensor in. Reinstall it up behind the cover. Okay, make sure that's locked back down. Click. And that's it. Double check the routing this way, down around. And to the brakes, right? Tight, tight. And good to go. Let's put the wheel on. All right, I'm just gonna use torque sticks to start. And then we'll lower the car down. That portion is done. I have to reset the service tool. F10 BMW 5 Series, this is 535. Brake service reset as part of the uh, rear brakes that I just replaced. So you have to key the vehicle on, not started. You have to wait for the messages to go away. This uh, wore through the sensor, so we do have a brake system drive moderately fault. It says replace brake pads, hit OK. I can hit the BC button to clear all of the messages, press and hold the left instrument cluster button and my services should come up it says rear brakes negative 420 press and hold again reset yep I do I'm gonna press and hold again and it should calculate as long as that sensor was replaced you can't reuse the sensor and all nice and green and 6,000 miles left now after doing a brake pad service, make sure you pump the brakes. Always pump the brakes. If you don't, you could have a big surprise and you run into something. Um, on this particular vehicle, it also has the electronic parking brake. So it is a good idea to start the vehicle and actuate the parking brake. There it is right there, parking brake, right, which is the button right here. And then press the brake again and to release it. And that's released. Thank you for watching. I hope this video is helpful. Um, please subscribe to my channel and uh, positive comments are always appreciated. Thank you.